Hi, I'm Ralph Gable of Electronics for the Inquisitive Experimenter YouTube channel. Today's topic is what I've been calling the self-SWR of an SWR meter. Well, to begin with a quick tutorial on what SWR is all about, SWR is short for VSWR, which stands for Voltage Standing Wave Ratio. And it is an indication of the impedance match of a feed line or a filter or an antenna uh, to the impedance of the equipment connected to it. So by way of example, consider uh, having a transmitter. It's connected to a feed line that's connected to an antenna. The transmitter is putting out power that goes out the feed line and up to the antenna. If the feed line and the antenna are all impedance matched to the output of the transmitter, then 100% of the transmitter's power is uh, transmitted out the antenna. You have an SWR of 1 to 1. If, on the other hand, your antenna's impedance is not matched to that of the feed line and the transmitter, that means that the transmitter's power is going to get up to the antenna, it's going to hit that impedance mismatch, and some percentage of the power that the transmitter is delivering to that point is going to be reflected back through the feed line and back at the transmitter your SWR is no longer one-to-one. -one. And the more reflected power, the more, the higher your SWR is going to be. If perchance you have a feed line that is not uh, impedance matched to the transmitter, and you have an antenna that's not matched to the feed line, now you have two points where power is being reflected back at your transmitter and your SWR is going to be even higher. The fact is, is that anything, anything that you put in series with your feed line is going to have an effect on your, on your SWR. Now, my interest in this whole business started when I was looking at my VHF transmitter for my amateur radio and something just didn't seem right. I, I couldn't put my finger on it, so I grabbed my handy-dandy VHF uh, SWR meter. And uh, having done so, I stuck that in there, and I'm saying, whoa, wait, 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 wait. My SWR is a lot higher than I expected it to be. What's up with this? So my next step was, well, shut everything down, grab my, my antenna analyzer, which I, I did. I connected that up to my antenna feed line, and, well, the SWR is different. Well, what's up with that? So I thought to myself, well, I think I need to do some experiments here. And what I'm presenting here is the first of one of those very experiments. I thought, what if I put a perfect 50 ohm load on the antenna connector of my SWR meter and then used my antenna analyzer to measure the SWR looking in the transmitter connector of my SWR bridge. Well, that brings up the whole topic of dummy loads. Uh, in order to do this experiment, I needed to have a dummy load that was a perfect dummy load, a perfect 50 ohm load, something that would look like the ideal antenna uh, that I could connect up to my uh, antenna uh, connector. And so we needed something that looked like it was really 50 ohms. Well, with all the parasitic capacitances and inductances that float around any device, the actual impedance of a dummy load is highly frequency dependent. You may have a dummy load that is rated from 1 to 650 megahertz, but that does not mean that it is 1 to 1 SWR from 1 to 650 megahertz. What that means is that the SWR is, some, is below some specified limit between 1 and 650 megahertz. 
And so here's a case in point in having measured the SWR of a, of a dummy load that I happen to have here in the shop. And you can see that this is not the dummy load to use for this experiment because it is far from ideal. So before you decide to do this experiment, you need to take your dummy load, whatever it is, and measure the SWR of the dummy load all by itself to make sure it really has a low SWR at the frequencies that are in question. Preferably something on the order of 1.05 to 1 or, or lower. So to avoid that issue, I chose to use a low power dummy load that had a measured SWR of about 1.01 to 1 using my VNA. So, here's the experiment. So the first step in the experiment is to take your calibrated known good uh, 50 ohm load and connect this up to the antenna connector. Be sure that you get that nice and snug and tight because believe it or not, it does make a difference. The other end, at the transmitter side, take your antenna analyzer and again, connect it up. I'm using a double male connector here. You can use anything you want, except know that the antenna analyzer is measuring the SWR here at the end of its connector here. So anything you put between here and your unit under test is going to be part of that measurement. So now we turn on the, the SWR meter, or the, the antenna analyzer. And I'm going to stand this up so that you can actually see things. And I'm going to sweep through the two meter band. Let's see if I can get in more closely. And if you notice here, let me zoom in here. Here at 144 megahertz, I'm coming down to 144. It's sitting right around 1.3 to 1-ish. And I sweep up through 145, 146, 147, 140, there's 148 megahertz. Now that particular antenna analyzer does not do the UHF band, so I could only check the VHF band with that. Although this SWR bridge is good for both the VHF and UHF band, and I wanted to do something a little bit more precise. So I fired up the VNA, which is a vector network analyzer. Uh, a VNA is a good thing because uh, when, you, when you calibrate the VNA, which you do before a measurement, it calibrates out all of the effects of the cabling and the adapters and all of that so that when you connect up the VNA to your unit that you're testing, you're only measuring the unit that you're testing. You're all, all the rest of the stuff isn't in there. So I fired up my VNA and I'm going to perform the same test sweeping across the entire frequency range of my SWR bridge and look at the results to that. So to begin with, you can see the, the uh, setup here. We have the the calibrated 50 ohm load right here on the antenna terminal of the SWR bridge. And we have the VNA connected up here, all calibrated right to the end of this connector. So we're just measuring the SWR bridge. Now let's take a look at the results of this, of this test. Now I'm going to try to hold this nice and still here. Um, what I did is I placed some markers here. The, this is the two meter band right here. This span is from 100 megahertz to 500 megahertz. 
This is the two meter band here. And this is the 70 centimeter band. And um, let me just zoom in a little bit more here. You'll notice here my markers at 144 megahertz to 148. Notice what the, the value is, 1.3 to 1 across the entire two meter band. Now the, the curve comes down. Here's the 70 centimeter band over here. And notice that my, my markers here, it's about 1.1 to 1 at the bottom end of the 70 centimeter band and about 1.2 to 1 at the top of the 70 centimeter band. So this particular SWR bridge actually gives me better performance at the 70 centimeter band than it is on the two meter band. It's interesting that the results from the previous test on the other SWR bridge agreed pretty much with what the antenna analyzer said. I had this old SWR bridge. It's an old Heathkit SWR bridge that's literally been kicking around in, in various places for quite a while. And I, I thought, well, I wonder how this, this old Heathkit SWR bridge would would perform. So I set it up exactly the same way as I set up the other one. I have my load here. I have my VNA connected here. And now if we look at the the uh, performance on the two meter band, because it's only rated up to 160 megahertz. If we look at the performance, look at that 1.1 to 1 across the entire two meter band compared to the other SWR bridge that was at 1.3 to 1. That's pretty awesome. As a kind of sanity check, I thought I would break out my Bird 43 watt meter and do the same test. Here I have my calibrated 50 ohm load over here. Over here I have my VNA connected. And let's just zoom in on these results and see. You can see that the, the line is very, very flat. And if we go here and zoom in on the results, if it will focus. There we go. Look at that 1.002 to 1 across the 2 meter band and 1.03 to 1 across the 70 centimeter band. So that kind of validates the test that uh, I had been doing. It shows that the SWR bridge is indeed as measured with the old Heath kit and my other one that is behind me at the moment. So the long and the short of it is anything that you put in line in your feed line is going to have some effect on the overall performance of your system. Some more than others as we have seen and sometimes it can be rather surprising which device performs better than other devices. The rule is if you don't need it in your feed line, don't put it there. And just because it says that it's rated between this frequency and this frequency doesn't mean that it's going to have the kind of performance that you're expecting between those frequencies. Don't make assumptions. So before you trust your SWR meter uh, to measure the SWR of your antennas, you might want to measure the SWR of your SWR meter and see if it's lying to you. Thanks for watching. This is Ralph Gable for Electronics for the Inquisitive Experimenter to Lutz.